Hmm. Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Today is March the 8th, International Women's Day, so they say. And what is a woman? What is a woman? Fortunately, in my head, I see that thing, you know, like Psalm 101 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Unfortunately, um, in my head, thinking about this day, and this is purposeful, apparently, I, I see that transvestite guy um, with the Hershey bar, with that, mm, and the bull, no, oh, bull ring in his nose. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, but this is International Women's Day today. What is a woman? What is a woman? You know, the authorized version of the scriptures tells us that there are two genders, male and female. God created the male and female. And woman means came of or out of man. That's what woman means. Huh. But what is a woman, huh? <laughs> please, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow me along because sometimes this goes quicker than the brain. So follow me along, okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, okay? If we come across something in this video where you're unsure of the context, you know what you do? Pause the video and in the scriptures, the authorized version, um, read the context by yourself on your own, okay? All right? But uh, today, oh, wow. Oh, wow. We're going to be going through something that the Lord just kind of boom, just boom, plopped into my lap. Okay. Oh, oh, and if you're wondering, <laughs> I think it's very meat for today. But uh, we are going to be going through today Song of Songs, chapter 8. We're going to have a bit of an expository video here. I am simply going to share with you what the Lord shared with me in the scriptures today. Because today is the 8th. And as part of my devotional time with our Lord, um, I will read in the corresponding days the Song of Solomon. Okay? Uh, some will read it more than once a month. I uh, Personally, I will read the Song of Solomon uh, once a month. Okay, eight days. Same with Ecclesiastes, 12. There are other brethren, praise the Lord, they will, they'll roll those over and continue reading that. Praise the Lord. <coughs> but it's interesting because when it comes to the Song of Songs, which is Solomon, that seems to be, unfortunately, one of the books of Scripture that, uh, unfortunately and needlessly, kind of gets overlooked. Similar with, like, uh, First and Second Chron uh, Chronicles, especially First Chronicles, the first 15 chapters with the names and stuff like that, right? But, you know, I hear a whole lot about, well, you know, that's talking about relations between a man and his wife. And it is. It is. It is. Yes, it is. And also, um, it's uh, Song of Solomon also shows the king's love for his Gentile bride, okay, who was a Hamite. And uh, no, you wicked... Black Hebrew Israelites, um, you cherry pick the one verse in song. I I talked with someone like who tried to use this that in uh, Song of Solomon, 
uh, chapter 1, uh, where it says, where is that, um, <laughs> verse 6, <laughs> uh, 5 and 6, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. What mine own vineyard have I not kept? I ran across some twit, and I'm being polite when I say that, saying, well, see, that proves that the Hebrews are all black. Oh, oh boy. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. No, it's talking about in the Song of Solomon, um, his preferred bride, his Gentile bride, Many um, surmise that it was Pharaoh's daughter, okay? Many surmise that it was Pharaoh's daughter, all right? I don't necessarily agree with that, but I don't disagree with that. I'm kind of on that indifferent because you know what? Um, uh, we're going to get before the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord's going to say, did you believe in Song of Solomon that that was Pharaoh's daughter? Huh? Oh, well, no. Okay, out you go. No, no, no. Okay, but there again, you got to be careful with that kind of stuff because these devil idiots, and I'm being polite, heretics, will say, see the proofs the Hebrews are black. But <laughs> it's hard to deal with and logically through the scriptures go through them with someone who holds that position, even though you give them plain truth. Because they don't want to hear it. But anyway, I'm getting a little rabbit trail there. Song of Solomon is a very special book in Scripture that I would recommend unto ye that you read that at least once a month. Because there's so much in there. I've heard of uh, some brethren and even some preachers who say, well, I'm not going to talk about go on the uh, book of Song of Solomon because that's a more of a more personal nature. And, there, and some will even point out that there are even sexual references within that. Uh, but they'll be like, no, nah, that's kind of a... No, you know what? Within the Song of Solomon, you can see all kinds of things. The Redemption of the Purchased Possession, chapter 2, okay? The Restoration of Israel unto their King. The Love of the Father for His Gentile Bride, okay? And also for the Church of the Living God. There's so much in the book of Song of Solomon. But see, the Jesuits and the Jesuit-trained cemeterians want you to have only this limited view of what actually is within the Song of Solomon. And they want to brush it off. Well, it, it, it's, a, a, it's too personal. We can't talk about it. And, you know, the sexual references. And a lot of these people who uh, hold to that view also are usually are ones who want to associate the sin of Ham, that it was, um, you know, sexual with, you know, uh, Noah. And they go away. But we're going to be talking about um, Song, of Song, Song of Solomon, chapter 8. And like I said, I'm going to share with you what the Lord shared with me. But before we do that, today is the 8th. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Hmm. Verses 1. On to verse, oh, let's read to verse 13. In Proverbs chapter 8. Here's another incident where wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, being compared for us to get a visual for our little finite minds to have a grasp on how precious the fear of the Lord is in the sight of the Lord. Because here we read about how the fear of the Lord, wisdom, is comparable unto a beautiful, beautiful woman. Okay? And then you got these, you know, the, the feminazis. So, well, that's sexist. But yet, today, in this dispensation, are we not the body of Christ, the church of the living God, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, male or female? Hmm? Hmm. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? And unto man he said, to fear the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. 
She, who, wisdom, standeth in the top of the high places, by the way in the places of the paths. Then you compare this with Proverbs 7 about the strange woman who flattereth with her words that's on the street of every corner, you know, the harlot, Roman Catholicism, okay? She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. And that's significant because in the times of old, the, the elders and the ruler type guys, not the king himself, but those who were in authority, that kind of stuff, they, they did a lot of their stuff at the entry of the gate, okay? Um, Job also gives testimony onto that, okay? Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. You do a side-by-side -side comparison read-through with uh, Revelation, with Proverbs 7 and Proverbs 8, the comparisons between the two. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools who say in their heart there is no God, be ye of an understanding heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Hmm. Understandeth. Plain to him that understandeth. Departing from evil, from the world. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. And you know, the idols that have the silver and the gold on them and all the glamour and the glitz that Satan offers you uh, through television, through media, like, you know, showing you the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, okay? And instruction and knowledge are a result of what? True wisdom true understanding, okay? Instruction and knowledge are kind of byproducts, if you will. Don't have a better word off the top of my head for that, okay? But stem from a true wisdom and a true understanding. There is a wisdom that comes of this earth, which is first what? Earthly, sensual, devilish, okay? Which gratifies and glorifies the flesh, okay? All right? But that is not the wisdom that descends from above. For wisdom, see the tie-in there? See the tie-in from verse 8 on to verse 11? You see that? Look at it. Don't look at me. Look at it. Pause the video. You know, get, get your little pen, okay? Or you get one of these Sharpie gel. Don't get the markers because they bleed through, especially if you have a set of scriptures that has India paper in it. So you, you use the Sharpie gel, okay? Go ahead, and in this context, from verse 8 on to verse 11, okay? Righteousness. Understandeth. Knowledge. Instruction. Knowledge. And right there, wisdom. Look at that. Look at that grouping of how our Lord speaks here. For wisdom is better than rubies. And what does Satan do? All this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. He offers you the things of the world, the rubies, the, the silver and the gold. Some guy with a bull ring in his nose and long hair and boobs saying with a Hershey bar. Eh. I can't unsee that. And forgive me for subjecting you to that. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Better than rubies. Have you seen a real life ruby before? Pretty, you know, blood red. Mmm. 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 Tie that in with the women putting blood on their lips with lipstick. And they want to kiss you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, praise the Lord, my wife don't wear uh, lipstick. Ugh. Okay. So wisdom compared unto a beautiful woman. But also wisdom is far beyond even rubies. And you read the book of Job about, about how he says about uh, wisdom and rubies and stuff like that as well. Okay. So the fear of the Lord. You know, it's for us, compare it, to, compare it to a beautiful woman, even more beautiful than my wife. Hmm? And for you, for you women, better than rubies. And I've seen real life rubies. Yeah. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. And verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride. Ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. I will be like the most high. I will. I will. I will. Pride. And arrogancy. Jeremiah chapter 44. As for the word of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will do as we have always done, no matter what you say, Jeremiah. <clears throat> and the evil way, contrary to the Lord, and the froward mouth do I hate. You go ahead and keep reading, because it is the eighth. Why didn't you read this already? Or is it mechanical for you and not life-giving? Uh, that's with some of you. It's a mechanical thing, isn't it? Isn't it? Not life-giving. Skip in Proverbs chapter 8 to verses 33 on to the close of the chapter. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. 32 on to the close of the chapter in Proverbs 8. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, wise, wisdom, equating that with the fear of the Lord, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Also, there is a comparison like whosoever obtaineth a wife obtaineth favor of the Lord. Okay? All right? And are we not the bride of Christ? Getting it a little bit? Oh, hold on. But he, and this, is on, this right here is on our front door. But he that sinneth against me Wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And who has the power of death? The devil. Hmm? Of course the Lord has the power of death. Hey! Don't stop with your... Uh... Never mind. Never mind. But the scriptures, I believe it's in Hebrews. Um, where uh, it mentions that uh, the devil has the power of death. Okay? Okay? All right. Yes, the Lord, obviously, he made you. He can take you out, right? Okay. Hmm. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You hate the Lord? I'm not against God. But you're not for him. There's, see, there's no gray area here. There's no gray area. <laughs> I like this, this T-shirt, you know, because of what it says and the fact that it's gray. Because Satan wants to introduce shades of gray. Hmm. Also today, um, there'll be links in the description box because, hey, this is International Women's Day, right? And we are the bride of Christ. Hmm. We ought to be. We are, scripturally. Hmm. Also today... Read, uh, read Proverbs 31. The whole thing. 
Okay, there'll, there'll be links in the description box where we talk about this, but go ahead. Now, let's go to the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. I'm going to go through this. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 1. Begin with verse 1, excuse me. Oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, yea, I should not be despised. Matthew chapter 12. Now, like I said, I am sharing with you what the Lord shared with me. Okay? You got a problem with it? Oh, well. Like I said, I'm just sharing with you what the Lord shared with me. Matthew 12, verses 46 on to 50. Okay, let's read that verse 1 again. Oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 on to verse 50. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother... And his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee, de desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. And said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. And today in this dispensation, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male or female. Barbarian or Scythian, Republicans or Demokami. Okay? Isn't that interesting? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection, yes. Yes. But isn't that interesting that he makes that statement in verse 50? Hmm. I thought so. Let's continue in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 2. I would lead thee and bring thee into on into my mother's house and would instruct me excuse me i would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house who would instruct me i would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate verse three his left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me When I kiss my wife, when I hold my wife, my left hand is under her head, and, you know. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Uh, and in the comment section, praise the Lord, you have uh, other verses you want to add to this in the comment section. Feel free to do so. Feel free to do so. Luke 13, verses 34 on to verse 35. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. Brad, what are you talking about? Where's, where's, where, where are you going with this? How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wing? under her wings and you would not a hen doth gather her brood her chicks children of Israel as father our Lord Jesus Christ under her wings okay by the way this does not mean that angels are female or that angels has wings okay 
this is a figure of speech that he is using here. Okay. All right. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Verse 3 again, and Song of Song, Solomon, chapter 8, his left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. The love of our Savior, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, for his bride, the church. Okay? You want that love of God? You have to go the way of the cross, dear friend. You cannot boot the door. And climb up some other way. You're a thief and a robber. You have to go the way of the cross, which is death, contrition, godly sorrow. And you got to have the hell scared out of you of the Lord himself. Verse 4 in Song of Solomon, chapter 8. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love until he please. Do you know that there are some out there who are purposely, purposely doing evil, that they might bring about their Messiah quicker? That's, uh, as I believe, that's some tenant of those who hold to the Noahide laws, that they permit or they encourage more disobedience so that in that disobedience they might bring about their Mashiach. Okay? But also on that, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Verses 11 on to 15. 10 on to verse 15, excuse me. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they, come, if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those, God, and whole as those that go down to the pit. Look at verse 4 again. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. How many of these people are out there purposely tempting the Lord? Purposely walking contrary to him, purposely. Look at Christianity in a whole, in the totality of it. Totally against scripture, totally against the God of scripture, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Look at the feminism. Look at it, look at it, look at it. And, the, and some atheists, well, where's your God? Huh? Where, where is the God of judgment? Where is your God of Elijah? <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Sooner or later, he's coming. And in an unavoidable way, you're going to meet him personally one day. Yes, you are. Your belief on, see, your belief on that is irrelevant. Okay? It is. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe that is true or not. It really doesn't. Because it, you're going to stand before him and give an account. Okay? It's either going to be at the judgment seat of Christ for us who get redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Or you're going to do it at the great white throne of judgment. L look at me. You're not going to get away from that. Your belief on giving an account to the Lord Jesus Christ is unavoidable. Your belief on whether or not you're going to do such is irrelevant. Okay? You are going to give an account, dear friend, to the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that you mock. The one that you despise. The one that you want to rouse up. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love until he please. That is what's being said, what our Lord says in Matthew chapter 23, huh? You think about rolling it around in your head case for a little bit. All right? Let's continue here in the Proverbs. Verse 13. We shall find all precious substance. 
we shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. Verse, 13, uh, verse 15 and 16. My son, walk not thou in the way with them, referring thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. And of course, Romans chapter 3. Uh, Romans chapter 3 before <laughs> verses, what, what is their favorites? Um, uh, what is it, 21? <laughs> Romans chapter 3. Oh, verses 1 on to verse 8. What advantage then hath the Jew? What profit is there of circumcision? And you got to remember, when the scriptures talk about a Jew, it's usually in reference to the Hebrews. Because unto them, much every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Who are the oracles of God committed unto? The Japhethites? The Brizraelites? No. The Hamites? No. All who are of Shem? No. But the Hebraic people who are called out of Shem. Okay? <clears throat> For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love until ye please. That was Song of Solomon uh, 8, 4. Verse 5 in Romans chapter 3. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. See, that's right there. The, the, uh, hold your place here. The right there, dear friend, is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capitalist spirit of God, the Lord himself. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And Paul says that I speak as a man. As a man who what? Doesn't have the spirit of God in them. Okay? He's asking an open rhetorical question. Okay? Let's continue. God forbid then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more bounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and some affirm that we say, <laughs> yeah, buddy, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just, Purposely doing evil that, well, let's bring your Lord back. Huh? Let's, let's, let's bring him on. Careful what you wish for, tough guy. You got that kind of an attitude. That's the natural man. I've heard Christians talk like that. And you wonder why I'm not a Christian. Christian, which means what? Someone who follows Christ, right? A genius, which one? Which Christ? <laughs> well, yeah, yes, you're right. There is only one Christ. But do they know that? Do the Christians know that? Aren't we to demonstrate by word and deed the Jesus Christ of the Scripture? <laughs> <clears throat> Back in Song of Solomon, chapter 8. Let's read verse 4 again. That was, that was a wow moment, but wait, we got more wow moments coming up. Verse 4. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. He will come back at his appointed time. I mean, you know, at the time of Jacob's trouble at the end of it, but he will call us up 
at the appointed time, whenever that time is, okay? Verse 5. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There my mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. And what do we got? Oh, uh, oh I ver okay, keep reading. Excuse me, looking at my notes. Verse 6. Verse 6. So, this one is pretty obvious. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. As a seal upon thine arm. And also, I believe it's in the book of Zechariah, where I have engraven you upon the palm of my hands. That might be Isaiah or Zechariah, where I've engraven you upon the palm of my hands. Okay? Uh, what is that? Uh, somebody help out with that, okay? But the seal, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Check this out. Ephesians chapter 1, okay? Ephesians chapter 1. You kind of figured this one out with the seal, right? And also in the time of Jacob's trouble. The 144,000 Hebraic Jews. The Jews. Not us Japhethites. Not you Hamites. Not even uh, the, some of those of Shem. But of the Hebraic people called out of Shem. 144,000 of them will be sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. And that'll be it. Okay? Otherwise, eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble except for the 144,000. Okay? But Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 7 on to verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his flesh. <laughs> we weren't expecting that, were you? In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Who is my brother? Who is my mother or my sister? Hmm? Hmm? You see that, Diane, huh? Isn't that nice? Okay. In whom... Oh, wait. Uh, oh, we already read verse 10. Excuse me. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated. And this is not the Calvinistic foolishness. Okay? You go the way of the cross, the way that he chose, and he saves you. You are elect because you went the elected way of the cross. And if you go the elected way of the cross, number one, in this dispensation, that makes you of the elect, okay? The elect, the elected way of the cross. The overall elect, yes, is the Hebraic Jewish people, the apple of God's eye, and that's why Satan hates the Hebraic Jewish people, okay? All right? But see, you go the way of the cross, your destination is predestinated to go to heaven and be with the Lord, okay? It's not this... Stupid nonsense Calvinism taught or Calvin taught. Questions about that in the description box, okay? The Calvinism, all right? Heresy, which is why, okay? Calvin, by the way, here's a little web trail, okay? The Institutes of the Christian Religion, which is about a three inch thick book, okay? Calvin said a lot of good things. Calvin said a lot of true things. But yet he really blew it on that one. Hmm. Hmm. I don't believe Calvin was a saved man. I really don't. Like I don't believe Martin Luther was a saved man. I really don't. I really don't. Okay? If I'm wrong, we get there. 
Hey, Lord, let me, can I eat? You going to give me some crow to eat? Huh? Give me, uh, Lord, let me have a big old slice. Uh, here, I won't even use utensils. Give me that, that humble pie. Let me eat it all day. Amen. Well, we'll find out when we get there. You know, it's like Catholicism. They have everything wrong. Everything. Well, there was a man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, yes. There was a man named Jesus Christ, yes. There was a man named Peter. There was a woman named Mary. And there was a man named Paul. Yes, there were. Yes, there were. Yes. And Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, they got that right, of course. But Catholicism has everything wrong with it. <laughs> but, but, they have who God actually is right. With the three-person trinity. They, they got all this other stuff wrong. But they got who God is right. <laughs> Calvinism. He got a lot of things right. But the select and non-elect persevering until the end. Um, you know, no really guarantee of salvation. You know, the Calvinists put forth eternal security, but a conditional eternal security, as long as you're persevering, okay? It's, it's like, dude, that, that, that's, you know, in the dictionary under redundant, it says, see, redundant. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? Hmm. Anyway, anyway. Any questions on the predestination thing? In the description box. Let's continue. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, we walk by faith, not by sight, okay? the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capitalist spirit of promise, which is the Lord himself, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession Unto the praise of his glory. That catching away of the body of Christ. Erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay? It's right there. Seal. Once saved. Always saved. Okay? And Ephesians chapter 4. Just one verse. Verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 30. Yes. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's read uh, 29 on the verse 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. <sighs> I get really sick of these people who say that, who, you know, who are against eternal security. Because they're natural people. They're not regenerate. They don't understand how a saved sinner can still sin. Okay? And that's partly because of what Catholicism has done, blurring as what a saint is. Okay? You're of the Church of the Living God. You're saved, born again, converted. You are a saint. But see, because of what Satan has done to the word saint, you're, what you think a saint is, is a sinlessly perfect individual. And because of the blood that covers us, because of the covering of Jesus Christ, when we stand before him, yes, that sinlessness in that we will go to heaven and nothing will be held against us eternally, but in means of our rewards, that's a different story, see? Okay? You gotta, why, you know, these people who are against eternal security because we save sinners still sin, they have no understanding of what Romans chapter 7 is about. Okay? 
and they go to establish their own righteousness. Watch out for anyone who speaks against eternal security. Okay? It's one thing to be ignorant. It's another thing to be a teacher such as a certain individual who I don't want to name who's a Hamite and thinks he's chosen and all these kind of things. Or you want to go even further? What about some of these Brizraelites? Or like John MacArthur or that wicked heretic, Paul Washer. You can go ahead and follow Mr. Washer there, boy. And Mr. Wilkerson, go ahead. Go ahead. For your sake, I hope you don't end up at the Great White Throne, boy. Let's continue. And we already read verse 30. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Let me confess a fault to you. I have a pride problem. No, Brad, really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And it's a daily struggle with me. It's a daily murdering, <laughs> mortifying of putting down, of killing. And I have moments of bitterness. I do. I do. I do. Unlike uh, certain select people who think they're perfect and never are hypocrites and never mess up themselves, I mess up daily. I sin daily. And I do have problems with bitterness from time to time. I do. And I even sometimes want to get even. But the Lord is leading me and teaching me better on that because Scripture says it's up to Him to get even. Not me. Not you. Okay? And I've addressed this before in videos also uh, where I've addressed that, yes, I've had um, problems, I have problems with bitterness from time to time. And I have a pride problem. Forgive me, body of Christ, church of the living God. My enemies, aren't you due to go somewhere south sooner or later here, huh? Okay, let's continue. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And who has he forgiven? Those who went the elect way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, called upon his name, and he saved them. Okay? There you have God's forgiveness. Understand? Okay. And while we are at it, where are we at? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's read verse 6 again. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, the coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51, under the close of the chapter. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. A twinkling of an eye is quicker than the snap of the fingers. When the redemption happens, it's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. You lost people might be having somebody uh, of the Church of the Living God witnessing onto you, and then you blink, and all of a sudden, they're gone. It's like, uh, honey, wasn't, wasn't there some weirdo uh, talking to me about Jesus? Where'd he go? Wasn't he right here? Yes, he was right there, Charles. Where'd he go, Gertrude? It's going to be that quick. Everything is going to change in the twinkling of an eye. Because in the twinkling of... In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump... It's not Donald Trump. 
Oh, some of my American countrymen. <clears throat> Never mind. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, our new body, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to path, pass, excuse me, the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Set me as a seal, uh, a, uh, Song of Solomon 8, 6, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Continuing in 1 Corinthians 15. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Because you wouldn't know what sin is without thou shalt not covet. And where is the sting of death, the grave? Most of us, even of the church of the living God, we're not afraid to go to be with the Lord. God forbid. What do we fear? The actual process of death, don't we? There are some fools out there who aren't even afraid of that. And they're going to hell. Uh, but... What do we do? Well, I mean, let's let's be honest, tough guy. Okay, right here, my heart stopped. Okay, I know of a, my like my best friend had to be. Same with others. Okay, you know. Um, you, you fall off of a building, probably won't hurt. You die in an explosion, you probably won't hurt. But that's what we do take cons concern with, not fear. It's like, oh, I don't want it to hurt. Oh, I don't want it to do this. But then again, you got to remember something. When that comes into your mind about the death that we are all going to face, um, you and I, most of us do not know or will know what a Roman crucifixion is like. Having, what was it? What was it? Uh, two foot long or something? Nails put through the hands because it had to go through wood. Okay. And through the feet. Okay. Having your limbs dislocated by stretching you and hence flatly like this. So basically your own body weight is suffocating you. Slow suffocation. And also, that thing about crown of thorns. I don't, I don't want to go to a lot of pain in my death. But you know, um, look at the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what I say? Shut up, Brad. Shut up. Thank you, Lord. Get what I'm saying? Verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, you're going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. Okay? But see, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We're going to go, you know, absent from the body, be present with the Lord. And you people who die outside of Christ, uh, you're going to go to hell. You're going to burn forever and ever. You have every reason to be afraid of death. Unless you're one of these idiots. It's like, I am scared of dying. Come on, boy. And then they die and, and then they're judged and go to hell. Fool. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, 
unmovable. Hmm. You. I've taken my stand. And I'm going to stand where I stand. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna change my mind. Understand? I'm aware of what's going on, just so you know. Okay? Just so you know. Just so you know. Okay? Love you. I love you. Come on now. Come on now. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor, sister, brother, is not in vain in the Lord. Back to Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7. Hmm. I like this. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would be utterly contemned. You know, and also you can tie into this, uh, which I did not write down, about the pearl of great price. Okay, but many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods Right away, Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore, Roman Catholicism, and all her daughters, that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Skipping a little bit to 13 and 16. These have one mind, and shall give, power, give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the hua, whore, sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Hmm. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Oh, how many of the waters. How many of the what? How many of the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues that are in league with the Vatican? How many are, are out there? Yea, hath God said. What is a Jew? What is this? What is that? Does it really mean? What is this? Yea, hath God said. Huh? Think about that. Think about that. It's a sting of death for us. But yet at the same time, all this deception, all this yea hath God said, all this flavoring of Christianity going on. Think about that. Hmm? Oh, we got to read, read verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. <laughs> Talking about, you know, the inevitable coming of the destruction of Roman Catholicism. But the multitude of peoples. What is this? Verse 15. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Hmm. There are millions, probably even, probably maybe even a billion Christians out there. But thousands of the church of the living God. I don't believe that we are in the millions. I really don't. 
of those who are truly, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. I don't think there's even a million of us. I really don't. I really don't. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I, <laughs> Lord, please, I'm, I hope I'm wrong on that. I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, the falling away, which are those who said that they were of us and were being made manifest that they are not of us. Because remember, saved people fall, but false converts fall away. Okay? All right. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would be utterly contempt. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. This is talking about, you know, you can also cross-reference this with Matthew chapter 23, okay? But, you know, what is, a, what is the enemy doing right now? Dear brother, sister, huh? What are they doing? Yea, hath God said, all over the place, what is a woman? What is a Jew? What is salvation? What is the word of God? Okay. <laughs> what does this mean? What does that mean? Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up daily. Would swallow me up. Excuse me. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. At what time I am afraid. Uh, where I just at what time I am afraid, I will I will trust in thee. And God I will praise his word. And God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. O oh, am Jesuits! The masters of torture. Isn't it interesting? The Jesuits who are the masters of torture are the ones that come up with slicing people's throats and messing with their vocal cords as with the guitar string, putting strings in people's eyeballs to, oh, to the goosebumps. Oh, only a Jesuit, only a Jesuit. Anyway, every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. <laughs> they gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. I find that interesting because, you know, um, their soul is in their hands. Because they got to keep the commandments, right? They got to do something. Our soul is in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? Unto him has been committed us. And we ain't going anywhere. I mean, we will eventually go somewhere, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger, cast down the people of God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Three books. Personally, which to this day was one of the uh, videos that I enjoyed the most ever doing. Was the three books. That uh, if I were to give in, you know, which one is the favorite, your favorite video you've ever done, Brad. That would be it. The three books. Okay. When I cry unto thee. Then shall mine enemies turn back, for this I know, for God is for me. And God will I praise his word, and the Lord will I praise his word. And God I have put my trust, I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God, I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. O death, where is thy sting? Okay. Wilt not thou deliver my feet? From falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Falling. Hmm. See, saved people fall. 
A just man falls seven times and rises up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. They fall away because they were never of us. Okay? Uh, even if you have a cross-reference, uh, look in your cross-reference for verse 13 in Psalm 56. You might even see a reference for 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hmm. I'm not going to do that at the moment, though. But now, Psalm 102. Psalm 102. You want to talk about a pure Jewish psalm. Psalm 102, verses 1 on verse 13. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke. My bones are burned as an hearth. Smoke and burn. Reference on to the concentration camp ovens. But also, while you can tie, I believe, Psalm 102 here into the Holocaust, yes, but also that persecution after that man of sin goes into that temple, the third rebuilt temple, I am looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus visage, okay? Um, the persecution that's going to come on those Jewish people, you have break people left behind. The Holocaust is going to be nothing in comparison, unfortunately. My heart is smitten and I and withered like grass so that I forget to eat my bread. Because by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. Imagine. Just, just imagine. You miss the redemption of the purchased possession. You go midway into the time of Jacob's trouble. Then all of a sudden, someone who is of your own kindred comes up and says, I am looking like the depiction of the Roman Catholic Jesus in the visage, wanting to change everything and turn everything back to Rome. And have you, the Hebraic people, worship as the Catholics do, or die? Hmm? Imagine what that would feel like. The mourning, the grief. We, how could we have been so blind? How could, how, 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 how? My heart is smitten and withered like grass. So that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. Look at pictures of the crematoria of Auschwitz. Okay? Or Dachau, I believe it is. One of them where they have owls on the doors of the crematoria. You, you took that out yourself. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Oh, there is so much with the pelican, the owl, and the sparrow. But another video. <laughs> My enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me, insane, are sworn against me. As Satan is sworn against the Jewish people. As Catholicism is sworn against the Jewish people. Hey, they say they are Jews and they are not. They don't openly say we are Jews, but they openly, brazenly uh, teach replacement theology. You can definitely, I believe, tie in the Holocaust in Psalm 102. But it's more significant, I reckon, for that time of Jacob's trouble for when those Jews that survive and go to run for the hills in Judea or something like that, let them flee onto the mountains, okay? I believe that is more applicable for that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, when they realize, whoopsie. But the enemies, mine enemies reproach me all the day. On YouTube, that disgusting, worthless odyssey, uh, the Jewish... Hatred, oh, is so revolting. 
on on things like Odyssey, okay? Uh, you know, YouTube, which is controlled by the Jesuits, and they are so caring about you and your children, <clears throat> when they promote uh, pedophilia and stuff, but at least the one thing that YouTube does crack down on is, at least for right now, a good part of blatant anti-Semitism. Okay? At least. Not giving any kudos to uh, YouTube uh, other than the fact that they haven't taken anything away yet. <laughs> but, okay? Let's continue. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath. Just like in the Holocaust, also during the time of Jacob's trouble. More significantly, I believe, for the time of Jacob's trouble. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. The turning point. The turning point. Of a people broken. Broken. The Holocaust broke the Jewish people, yes. But today they are still doing the things as Eli Wiesel talked about in the book Night. I recommend you read that book Night by Eli Wiesel. Eli Wiesel, okay? That talks about what it was like before, during the Holocaust. How they were reading their Talmud and the Kabbalistic magic and all this stuff. The stuff that the Jewish Hebraic people were doing before the Holocaust, they're doing today even worse. But this, this is the beauty of Psalm 102. But thou, O Lord, is your turning point. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever. And thy remembrance unto all generations. Verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Like I said, you can definitely, I believe, tie in uh, the Holocaust of the Jew in World War II, but Psalm 102, I'm telling you what, brother, sister. You talk about a psalm that tells the story of the conversion of the Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's right here. And also, too, here's part not part of the notes, but, you know, verse 7 again. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would, be, it would utterly be contemned. And, of course, what were you thinking of, brother? Romans 8, right? Let's go. Come on. Come on. Romans 8. <clears throat> oh, let's read verses what? 31 on the close of the chapter? Sounds good. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all by the means of the cross, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Now see, the Calvinists will come in with the elect and non-elect, but the context, and we've already talked about what the elect actually is for us today. It, it, is, God, it is God that justifieth. How are we justified today? Huh? How are we? By grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. Why? And also, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on two good works. Okay? All right? We are justified. We are justified by faith, by his grace, through our faith. Okay? And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth the way all our sin. Who justifies us? Jesus Christ. He is our justification. And see, some of you, it's like, well, Brad, no, you, you're nit, you nitpick. It's this specifically. It's this specifically. It's Jesus Christ. He is our justification. Okay? He is our justification. And knowing uh, some of you, you'll probably take issue with that, seeking to justify yourself. 
won't you? Go away. Go away. Okay? Let's continue. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You know, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, okay? For I am persuaded that neither death, O death, where is thy sting? Nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 8. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? Oh, this is, check this out. 2 Corinthians, chapter 11. Check this out. 2 Corinthians, chapter 11. Where are you going, Brad? 2 Corinthians, chapter 11. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? Check this out. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 on to verse 4. Now, a young, a young woman who hath no breasts isn't spoken for. Go with me. Context of the scripture were to be a young what? Virgin. A chaste virgin, right? Check this out. Would to God ye would bear with me a little in my folly, and ye indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Are you looking at that? For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Huh? Look at that. Isn't that, neat? Isn't that cool? I like that. The, the Lord showed me that. It's like, wow. Wow. We have a little sister and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? Come up hither. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, ah, what we already addressed about how our enemies can pass us daily, right? But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, yea, have God said, subtle. Some of you are way too subtle for your own good. So, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus to be a Christian is someone who follows Christ. What Christ? For there are many. Christ means what? Anointed one. Okay? Okay. What might have been at a time where the word Christian might have meant something? I rest my case. I budge none that at all, thank you. I love you. I ain't gonna budge on that. No way. No way. No way. I'm not going to be, you're not going to put me in with the enemy who is also a Christian, right? Ain't happening. Ain't happening. But anyway, okay? Anyway, 
For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, God loves you unconditionally. <laughs> you can imitate him, you know. Oh, boy, don't get me started on that. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him another gospel. You got to keep the commandments. Another gospel. Just believe. What about repentance and, and, and uh, prayer and calling? That's all works. Just believe. What about uh, not being conformed to the world? You shouldn't. No, you, you should. Yes, you should not conform to the world. But don't worry if you don't. It's okay because you just believe. Revelation, what language is that? <laughs> Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. I scribbled there. Revelation 19. Okay. Chaste virgin to Christ. We have a little sister and she hath no breasts. A chaste virgin to Christ. What shall we do for a sister in the day when she shall be Praise the Lord. Okay. Revelation 19. Verse 6 on verse 9. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. <laughs> oh wow. And as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of mighty thundering saying. A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A. -L -L -E Dear fellow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your heart. I don't mean that in the southern way. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah does not appear in scripture. It's hallelujah. Okay? Saying hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb. Chaste virgin to Christ. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? Hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? <laughs> Let's continue now in Song of Solomon. Our next verse that we got something on is verse 11. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. And also you could tie in about how Jesus, he is our rock, our foundation. We build upon him. Our foundation is built upon Jesus. Not shifting sand, you know, stone. I am a wall. And my breasts like towers. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhamon. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Us Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. Because the Jew rejected the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Okay? And, and there's some guys out there twits. Well, that's racism. God's racist. But yet he's allowed a way for you and I Gentiles to be grafted in to the tree of the Jew to be equated with his people. The elect way of the cross. Brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! See the depravity of our enemies, the pettiness, okay? Matthew 21, verses 33 on to verse 44.
Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it around and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Read Deuteronomy, how the Jewish Hebraic people were put in the promised land to be an example, a witness unto the heathen nations. You read about that, I believe, in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay, we today, as Church of the Living God, as ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, walking our lives in accordance with the scriptures for us today, the doctrine considered thereof, and the fear of the Lord when reading the Old Testament. Okay, you get it. Okay, the tie ins. Okay, let's continue. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhaman. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring forth, was to bring a th was there, <laughs> every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. Okay. And the husbandmen, back in Matthew 21, and the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Talks about how the Lord will give witness and testimony unto people. And how many of them is like, get away, get away. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about his people, the Jewish people, yes. Okay. Instruction and righteousness is right here in front of us. Okay. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize upon his inheritance. So it will be theirs. Um, you know, they don't want Christ to rule over them. They shall be their own gods, knowing what is good and evil. We will not have thee to rule over us. We will not do as you have said. Okay? Oh, like, like we saw already in Matthew 12. Right? About the, hold your place here and go back to Matthew 12. Okay? Matthew chapter 12. You see how this ties in? Matthew chapter 12. Uh, no, that's not it. About the, um, about the brood. Uh, that was Luke. Excuse me. Excuse me. Luke. That was Luke 13. Go there. Sorry about mm, re reference. Luke 13. Okay? Luke 13, 34 and 35 again. <sighs> 13, Brad. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood on her wings, the embrace of our Lord. And ye would not... But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord thereof the, the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto the husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Now, a lot of people will come to this and say that God is done with the Jewish people. you got to read Romans chapter 11. God has not forsaken his people, the apple of his eye. Okay? Also, you got to remember that the very generation that our Lord was talking about, the parable of the fig tree, you know, that kind of thing. Okay? God has not cast away his people. God forbid. Okay? Romans chapter 11, replacement theology, okay? That's Catholicism. That's Catholicism. That's what, like, guys like uh, um, that uh, the sodomite guy from Arizona, um, Anderson, Stephen Anderson, who is a sodomite. Yeah, he is, okay? Um, he comes to this and says, see, God's done with the Jews. It's the church. That's Catholic, 
Okay, that's Catholic. Okay, but uh, go back now to Luke 13, verse 35. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Verse 42 in Matthew 21. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in, your eye, in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God, spiritual, shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Make you God jealous with a foolish nation. Okay, That doesn't mean at all that the church has replaced Israel. That's crazy. Okay? In the description box, in the description box, okay, we'll be talking, you know, we talk about that uh, replacement theology, okay, Romans chapter 11, okay? And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Okay? Now let's continue in Song of Solomon chapter 8, picking up at verse 12. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, o Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice, cause me to hear it. Verse 14. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like to a roe or to a young heart upon the mountain of spices. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verse 16 on to verse 21. 21. 22, excuse me. <laughs> Revelation 22, 16 on to verse 21. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, not son of the morning. You're reading the Bible, morning star is in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, isn't it? See, the Bibles tell you that Jesus was cast out of heaven. Hmm. And we're supposed to have distinction, remember? And the Spirit, capital S, and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And wouldn't you know that one of the most messed with, with books in the New Testament is the book of Revelation. Go figure. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Make haste, my beloved grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. We're almost done. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 25 unto the close of the chapter. Today is Nat International Women's Day. And what is a woman, right? Are we not the bride of Christ? You're saying we're all women. Shut up. Shut up. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Ah, the tie-in with what is taught in Song of Solomon about the Lord's love for his body, the church of the living God. Okay? 
that he might sanctify it, sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. We have a little sister, she hath no breast. What shall we do in the days she is spoken for? Hmm? So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own... In context to Christ. Okay? Yes. For us today, doctrinally, between a man and a woman in marriage. Yes. But the deeper thing that's being talked about is Christ. His relation unto his body, the church. Not the building. And not these Christians. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. It says it right there. Okay? For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are part of him. He is part of us. He cannot deny himself. If we're unfaithful, if we are not, hold your place here, that's in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay, hold your place instead of misquoting. Come on, fingers, work with me. Oh, boy. <laughs> the pages are finally getting worn in, okay? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 11 on verse 13. It is a faithful saying. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. That is not talking about losing your salvation. It's not your salvation to lose. Once saved, always saved. You deny him. Uh, he can deny you blessing, peace, whatever, but not salvation, okay? All right? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Why? <laughs> For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He cannot deny himself. That doesn't mean we are little Christs, okay? We are of his house. He's in us. He has sealed us, okay? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So many tie-ins you can make right there with the Song of Solomon, okay? This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. And hence you read Song of Solomon and that love that is being talked about is the love that the Lord has for his body, himself, the church and the living God. Nevertheless, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You women, sisters, but we as the body, the bride, the church of God. We have already read in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1 on to verse 4. Okay, go there again. Okay, what did Paul say to us? What did the Lord say to us through Paul? Excuse me. For I, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And that the wife see that she reverence her husband. Marriage between a man and a woman, yes. Verse 32 in Ephesians 5. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Not a building. The body. Okay? Who is our husband? The Lord Jesus Christ. You get it? And, and, and what, uh, what some of you are probably, some of you devils out there, Galatians chapter 3, okay? Verses 26 on to verse 29. For this dispensation, salvatically, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ Jesus have put on Christ. 
uh, you've been baptized into his death. Meaning, you died to your self-righteousness. You were man or, or woman, mankind, and you took responsibility for your actions. And in fear, you called upon the name of the Lord. And he saved you. Hopefully. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus as pertaining to salvation. Culturally, no matter what the devil wants to do with the stupid other kin and these transvestite, what other filth, okay? He created the male and female, okay? You psychotics out there, you're not a dog. That one guy in the other kin video, that, that was a guy. That's a guy. That's a guy who's a trans as a woman, who as a trans woman thinks it's a wolf. Wow, you could uh, cuckoo. You can't make up nonsense like that. A trans man wanting to be oh, a trans man wanting to be a woman wanting to be a wolf. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, days of lot. <laughs> okay. This is talking about in salvation. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In Colossians chapter 3, of course, we've got to hit this. Got to hit this, okay? Colossians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 14. In whom also ye are circumcised. Am I reading the right one? No. Uh, 3. 11 on to verse 14, excuse me. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And those who are truly forgiven are those who came to Christ on his terms, not their own, the way, the elected way of the cross. Okay? And above all these things, put on charity, which is self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. And finally, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 15 on to verse 19. Goodbye, brethren. Beg your pardon. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 on to verse 19. <clears throat> Let's go for uh, 13 on to verse 19. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, into all things, which is the head even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, departing from evil, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. <clears throat> 
that ye have not so learned Christ. Hmm. Yes, brethren. Yes, brethren. So, that is going to be it for this video. Um, like I said, now we're stopping this abruptly because that's all there is to it. <laughs> um, this was just today. Excuse me. This was not the video that I thought was going to be done today. No. But in reading the scriptures this morning, the Lord's like, boom. So, whoa. So, thank you for watching this. If you do, I hope this, uh, I hope, I uh, hope you, uh, hope the Lord shows you stuff through this. Uh, uh, I hope the Lord continues to grow you and show you even more of things maybe he did not reveal unto me. Maybe he'll reveal it unto you. Praise the Lord. Um, thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you, brethren. Thank you to those who love us and pray for us and help us. Pl please pray for one another. Please pray for one another. If you have a prayer request that you want the body of Christ to be know, made aware of, known of, and have people praying for you of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, you got the two emails in the com in the description box. Send an email. Put it in the com in the community thing, and people will see it and hopefully pray for you. Okay, so, but that's gonna be it. Gonna get this video going and uploaded. Thank you for watching. I love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>